Good morning. This is Chris, Great Brick Lab. I am doing today's vlog. Today is October 25th. It is 4.42 a.m. And uh, I got Steve here at the store with me. Hey, how you doing? It's just me and Steve right now. Uh, the weekend orders came in really well. I'll show you what those are. So we have 55 orders. What was the question? Yeah, on 15.9 from eBay. So we started doing eBay sales as well. But here is the 55 orders, 1,186 lots, 3,022 parts we have to pick today. Today we will have, I think, three different people picking orders. We're gonna do at least two different pick sheets. I'm not sure if we'll get everything picked and packed today. I don't think we will. The first pick sheet we'll do, uh, we'll get done all the way through. And the second one, probably not. The way we do it, we do first in, first out. So any order that's coming first, we'll go out the door first, and that's our goal for the first pick sheet. And what Steve is preparing right now, this is a pound of bulk Lego um, that uh, is completely just all it's just is washed. It's been screened for for valuable parts, and we're gonna get we get it washed. We sort it one more time to make sure there's some uh, no non Lego in there or troll what we call, and then we ship that out because we started selling. Um, on eBay, one pound of Lego at a time, and here's the shipping label that just came out. So, so we uh, also bought some boxes. They'll be coming in soon, uh, but right now what Steve is searching for is a box to fix the eBay order. I am heading over to get my skates on, and then we will continue, and I'll continue to keep you updated uh, throughout the day today. All right. Always gonna put my skates on. Well, I always like to put my skates on every morning as I get ready to go for work. I already dropped off some of the washed Lego that we wash at home and we bring it in. We screen it and we wash it at home. I didn't have enough boxes at home so I had to bring it in the mesh bags and just fill one of the empty boxes we had here. I'll show you an update over in the warehouse area here as well. And I have updates to show you also uh, in our pick path. We made changes to the pick path. Well additions to the pick path and we have new drawers to lay up on I'll show you that as well. I really 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 like my skates. This is a very good workout and I don't have to spend a separate time working out now. I can combine that and I burn actually more calories doing this while working than I did focusing uh, uh, but uh, you know I don't get as much thinking time. That's one thing. I got a lot of good thinking time when I was working out and uh, focusing just on a workout. All right, so I'm gonna show you some of the couple of areas here. All right, we are heading over to the other side here. So now we have two of these racks. The second one has been built. One of them's nearly empty. Well, it's starting to get filled in. So there is the rack. The second one, those metal shelves we got for free. We took those from somebody else who had a warehouse they closed. Then we've got that shelf there that we'll fill in. Floor one, the, along the floor there is pretty full. If this is your first time watching one of our vlogs, um, basically what I'm gonna do today is uh, kind of just go through the day and tell you what the day of a general store operating owner and uh, what it takes to run it. And it looks like, oh, he already made the coffee. <laughs> Coffee's already made, already ready to go. I'm trying to decide if I want it this early or not. I brought in my tea with apple cider vinegar dripped in there. Got that all ready to go. We, I wash kitchen towels at home, I bring them in and then we, uh, keep the towels refreshed in the warehouse, so I've got those in. All right, I'm gonna show you uh, where I'm gonna be labeling today. All right, we're heading over. All right, so lately what we've been using this table here for is to, the bulk that we receive, we, the big stickers? I put the big stickers right here. So we printed big stickers for bigger boxes. 
I got these stickers really inexpensively and they were so old, the, the corners of them were yellowed at uh, yellow from being just so old. And Steve puts it right over the battery thing. Nice. Good job. Okay. So um, what happened, uh, what changed here is this wall here, uh, when we built the place, it was a picking row on both sides. And now, so this, like for example, this pick row right here, down the center here, these things are just screwed into each other all the way down all the way down that side and all the way down that side. I'm gonna go get a wide angle lens to help you see things better because I'm also close up here. All right, a little bit of a more fisheye type view here. So let me show you one more time here. So this is the pick row and then this, this area right here, these things are just screwed into each other, right? What we've done on this last row, this is row number, so you got one, two, three, this is row number four. This will be our last row of parts. So we're trying, I'm planning on four rows. And the only on this last row, only this side will have parts according to current plan. And it will be these larger drawer units like this. We'll use those larger drawers so that uh, we can fit bigger parts like what we're doing right here. Okay, so this is what we call row X. And row X will be a side to side picking row for this row. And then as you go over the gap, then this section right here will be for um, the drawer units only. I have a lot more drawer units to be. Bought two of these this weekend and one down there. Got those really good deal. And we got parts on the floor. I thought those were part. I've been wondering where did this came from. I'm going to assume that they just jumped out of this little container right here. It's overfilling. It's been way overfilled. So, all right, this is where we've added. So, down this row here, it did have on both sides of it. It had the acre mills. Pulled them off, placed it with wood. And now right here on this side, we've got it on both sides. So this, this section right here is new. This one here has been sitting here, but now it's a fixed. And then all of this has been here for a while. Then these are installed now. Then those are now installed. So now I have six more to buy. And we're gonna fill in that section right there for the wall. And then also I have another extra section to label. I can label all these. And then also right here, these orange ones right here are actually empty. So, yeah, and then actually like, oh, there's all types of empties in there. A bunch of empty there, a bunch of empty here. We have quite a few empty drawers uh, in the whole system to fill in. And we have to figure out, you know, labeling and numbering and, and whatnot in this area here. However, Today, on this row here, our last number is 37, is that right, 37, nope, over here, 3830. So 3830 is the last one, and now I'm gonna start, I think I'm supposed to start here. So start up here, so if that was the last one there, and then it goes from, from here to here, 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 and now I'm starting over here. So that's where I'm supposed to start. So that's what I want to get started on. This is the beginning of the drawer labels, and I just got my first cabinet done, and I'm working on my way down. Okay, so I ran into a setback while I was labeling the drawers. I was doing a time lapse, and I ran into a setback. If you look at the drawer, or the label here, you can see part of it printed off of the label. And uh, Steve asked me, well, does it still scan? And I'm like, no, it doesn't scan because it's part of the barcode. I mean, barcode technology works or it doesn't work. However, so this right there, that's 3709. And if I, I'm scanning it right now, and it, it is scanning it. So if I scan 3703, 3903, 39, 
3895, 38. Yeah, so they're scanning. But those are those the ones there that are scanning. Those are still next to the barcode that was printed. So I took it off and said left that little part right there. I guess that little part there is not so critical to the label that it works. Let me try this one down here at the bottom just to be sure it's not some kind of an anomaly. So we're scanning. So part of 3908's barcode is left down there. Let's see if it scans. And it does, 3908. So save me the save me the time of having to reprint these labels, which I was about ready to do. And Steve just asked a question and made me think. And I was like, well, I, the only way I know for sure is if I try it. So here we go. All right, sheet one is empty and finished. I accidentally printed it on the wrong side. I make that mistake nearly every single time. You think I'd get it right, but I keep forgetting how to put those pieces of paper in that printer so they print correctly. Our inkjet printer and our laser printer are backwards, or there's flip flop. So I always forget which one's which. I'm going to do some more time lapse and do another sheet. So I have finished the first column, 38, 31, all the way down to 3968. Now I'm going to swap sides and work my way down there. This is cool. I just hit 4,000, 4,000, 4,001, 4,002. I thought I'd stop and show you. I'm on my third sheet. I'm gonna stop the time lapse and I'm just gonna to continue to go through. I'm easily gonna get through sheet number five today. I didn't, I thought I'd get farther with sheet five, but I'm through one column and I'm starting on the second column. I'm thinking with sheet number five, I won't even finish the third column and, and I'll need more sheets, obviously. I don't even know how high the numbers are gonna go. I haven't done any of the math yet but uh, I'm gonna just keep on labeling here. Steve has finished the labels. They're printing out right now. 22 orders. What happened? Oh, cause one of them was uh, repeated. Uh, one, one the one duplicate. All right. So Steve does them one at a time. Chris does them different. So we, we, we make so many labels, we have to tear them apart as quickly as possible. Let's try and save time anywhere you can. So we tear them into sheets of two, and then we tear the sheets of two in half, and then we tear them multiples at, at one time. We'll show you that in a moment here. Anything you can do to save time, even when it comes to tearing apart your labels, is important. Oh, you gonna let me do it? All right, you yeah, hold, you hold, wanted to show them. Yeah, hold the camera so on me, all right. So what you do is you take the labels, and you set them up so they're Two labels, and I messed up. Alright. So, for the most part, I think I got it right. Okay, so labels in two sheets, tear them all in half, then take the label. Oh, looks like I missed one. Oh, I missed two of them. I didn't do it right, Steve. You're slipping today. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, I'm slipping all over the place. But now these sheets are all two labels per. And you just take them all and you just tear along the perforation. Then you put them in alphabetical order. We, let me cover up the address here. But what we do is we take the order number and we put a letter behind it so that we can uh, identify the location of the um, the bin that we dropped the order in as we're picking the orders because we do you know alphabetical 
assignments, um, and we start with A and work our way down. So that's how we do our picking. All right, today we're gonna have two picking teams. So I've got to finish the other pick cart, which is not finished. Grant just came in. Grant, you wanna be on the vlog? No? No, maybe? Yes, no? Yeah, yeah, go get some coffee, man. So, um, yeah, we got Grant coming in today and I am working on this picking cart. So the picking cart, I've shown the picking cart before. Let me show you the other completed picking cart, what it looks like. And I don't have all the equipment to design this exactly the same way, but we'll get, be able to get really close. So it'll have a smaller iPad, an iPad mini, but it's got the uh, A through, well, actually A, B, C is here, A, B, C. And it starts off with D, and I talked about that earlier in the pick sheet. And then it's got the pour tray, it was an absolutely critical tool. The iPad, it's got a back, backup battery for, for that unit in case that, because uh, it always goes dead by the time you get through the pick. So I'm gonna try and design it like this, but I don't have a duplicate of all the equipment here, but since we have two picking teams today, I do need a second picking cart. So I'm gonna just kind of give you a wide angle view of me building this thing on a time lapse and we'll see how far I get. All right, so these, these little sheets, they come with our shelving from Sam's Club and I cut them to size for different shelves and uh, they kind of always end up turning out. Um, well, let me show you. I like to tell my team I'm the straightest cutter, so that's my straight cut right there. <laughs> so perfect straight cut, right, right down the line. I don't even see a problem there at all. I am leaving the warehouse. The time is, uh, time is it? 6.50. Uh, what I didn't tell Grant and Steve is I'm coming back. I'm gonna surprise them and I'm coming back. I'm taking a day of vacation from my other job and it looks like maybe, no, it's just somebody else. So this is the garage door to the outside. There's a street right there. Uh, eventually maybe we do retail and we got another empty lot. It's like that way that I want to buy and do some uh, retail business, but I have time for that right now. This is a big pile of troll right here. We are looking at that. If you want to buy a non-Lego, oh my gosh, we got so much. So anyways, very productive day. Almost finished with the picking cart, the second picking cart. Uh, definitely get that wrapped up when the second picker shows up. Uh, and we have two picking teams today. It's going to be a phenomenal day. Uh, hopefully very, very productive. So anyways, right now I'm heading home, gonna have some breakfast with my family and then I'm coming back and I'm gonna surprise these guys. So I will continue this vlog okay. then. This is the new size that only Kyle gets to use. <laughs> Sorry, Kyle. But this is all I can afford to give you right now. So here you go. Well, thank you, I will cherish it. Pack all your orders in those bags, Kyle. Thank you. So I am back in the store. And uh, cruising around really well. I've crashed nearly, what, three times now, Steve? No, it's like eight. Eight. But I've got my fuel. I've got fuel for the team. Those are cookies. And I'm clearing off the shelf. Here, let me show you. So this shelf, I'm clearing that right there. I'm organizing this shelf for them. Get, I'm taking directions. I'm really just here to help these guys out today. And uh, I'll show you what, what else is going on. Grant's pulling books right now. Here's his pick cart. Kyle's knocking things over. Grant's looking for the books. And then we do have another pick happening right now on the other cart that was just finished, as you saw. Down the first row, there he is, doing his picking. The picker ran into an issue. Um, if you look at the pick sheet, you can see U3161 falls right after O210 and before the A's, and that's because it's a capital U. So sometimes when people enter drawer numbers, 
uh, with capital letters, which shouldn't happen when they use the scanner. So somebody must have manually typed that in there. Um, and the part was there. What was the part? Okay. With a print on it. Oh, a classic piece. Cool. So yeah, so your pick path is the problem. So the, the individual who's picking ran into a stoppage because he's picking and he's like, why is this so far out of order? It's really messed up. So now I'm, I'm gonna go fix the drawer. Okay, so it's gonna be a capital U, which actually, it only happens on 3161 is what it was, right? 3161. Yeah, somebody manually entered all these parts with the U3161 and that drawer is pretty full. So I don't wanna do all these by hand. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna to go to Brick Store and Brick Store, reopen Brick Store. So Brick Store, when I opened it, was downloading. So what we do is we come in here and actually we click over here. Brick Link Store Inventory. So this has got a password and it logs onto our store and it downloads our entire store. And, and then up here, it'll show you the value of our store and the number of lots. Our store is a lot, so um, it's right there is the number of lots. Uh, 439,355 uh, parts, 61,489 lots. But we are looking for uh, U3161 and narrow this view down a little bit. And anything you do operational wise when you change the entire sheet, because we have so many lots, takes a minute for the uh, processor to complete. But what I'll do is I'll highlight all of this remarks field and then uh, categorically change everything to a lowercase u and then the problem will go away the next time we build a pick sheet. Um, nope, that's what One of the things we also do every single day is we double check every order. So the order's been picked. Kyle's got an order laid out here and he's verifying it part by part as he's going. Actually, it looks like he's doing a back pick. He's got an order here. He's picking from the back end while the person's picking from the front, he's picking from the back. Steve's pick sheet is done. And right now he has finished verifying those parts for that order. It looks like he's finished it because he's also posted it. So up here you can see that it's not on, a, not on the parts sheet anymore. So he's posted it, he's packaging it and it'll get packaged. But that's our double checking process. Talking right about here. the number of lots. It's a lot, it's a lot of lots. This is all stores in all of Bricklink. Now this is not um, consolidating our lots, but when you look at the, the number one store, who's only 9,000 lots in front of us, they are also not consolidating their lots. So typically, I would not also care, categorize them as number one. However, we are at the top of the list, number two. So take it for what it is. New guy, looking for a part? Yes, I am. Missing lot. Look at that, he doesn't have a portrait. He's just standing here looking for parts. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, this is my next five sheets. I'm gonna start right down there. I don't know how far I'll get today. I think I heard a Lego drop. And he's gone. Disappeared on me. All right, I'm gonna get going on this. Continue to go, so thanks for watching. All right, I'm gonna wrap up the vlog. Uh, it is towards the end of the day here. We're at uh, 11, 153. I got a few more uh, items I'm gonna do. I have uh, labeled 800 drawers. I have another 400 I'm gonna get labeled. Uh, Kyle and I were just conversating and it turns out we packed uh, 41 orders. Well, we have three left. We've packed 41 orders and picked 975 lots very close to 975 lots. I have no, I have no idea how many parts that was, but we usually focus on the number of lots that we get. Uh, we had problems throughout the day, lost parts, missing parts. Uh, we had sent a few notes to customers and regrets, and typically what we do if we have a regret on a missing part or two missing parts for one order, for example, definitely give them a refund, offer them free shipping on a future order, say, can we find some of the parts for you that, to equal value, or what else are you looking for just to help them out? It's a little bit of extra effort for us, but we feel like we've messed up. We need to take care of that customer and give them a positive experience as opposed to just say, hey, we lost our pots. And we don't have parts that you ordered and sorry. We try and do a little bit more than that. Yeah, we are sorry, but uh, trying to give a little bit of extra. 
Uh, we had two people today. One of them was their very first time and one of them was their second time working and they both became very effective at the tasks that we assigned them to do. So thanks for watching this vlog. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll probably get another one out really soon here. Kyle, Kyle's here, you can say something. Hi. Hey. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah. We did pretty good today. Got a lot of orders out the door and a lot of lots out the door. Yeah. So. That feels really good. Um, we are trying to increase our production. We had six people total in today. Um, and with, with all that six people, we were able to do twice as much work. Um, if on a typical two person, Kyle and Steve operating, it would have taken probably till Wednesday to get all 900 of those lots processed. So we were very, very productive. Um, and not everybody worked a full eight hour day. Two people only worked for four hours. So, uh, you know, that's what we are. We're contractors. You can work in as little or as much as you want. Um, hired a new sorter today. Well, he's going to try, he's going to try us out a new, actually a new cataloger. We tried a new cataloger, gave him some parts to work with. He's going to go home and try and learn the software. So we have that as well. So it was very, very, very productive day. And uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, other days we can process like this. This is a great Monday. So again, this is Chris from the Great Brick Lab, everybody. I'm checking out.